Hi everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today our expert trainer will be discussing about EKS architecture and AWS services and he will be providing you a whole overview of the different services like availability zones, network, AWS load balancer, AWS storage and AWS IAM. So let's get into the video. This is your on-premise or this is well, let's suppose your laptop, your home and over the internet this you might be client or you might be coming from here. I'm going to connect to AWS here this and this is my something called as a region. What is region? I'm going to cover that in a minute and inside a region. I'm going to create a VPC, which is a network. I'll tell you about VPC is also what is a v VPC. I have something called as availability zone. I'll explain you what is availability zone as well and then availability zone inside the availability zone. I have my master node in my cluster, which is my control plane. I have my worker nodes, which are these three worker nodes. Assume right now three worker node. I've just shown you the deployment. You can have a EC2 in a managed, self-managed, or Fargate water. Assume for the time being, these are my uh, machines. So what is I need to know what is my region? I need to know what is availability zone. I need to know what is VPC. I also need to know what is subnet. And uh, so we'll cover that's what I'm going to explain in a minute. Apart from that. A user should have some permissions to create these. So there's a policies, identity and access management you should have knowledge of. Then, excuse me, sorry. So ECR we already covered, which is a elastic container registry. When we early at the start of this session, we saw that it's a repository to store images. And this is where, when I need to deploy my applications, I'm going to pull my images from here. And deploy it on top of this cluster. So this is in a high level. We'll go back into once we understand the concepts. So first is terminology. I said region and availability zone. So this is my one reason. Inside that I have availability zone one and availability zone and availability zone three. One two three. So region is nothing but a geographical location in which my AWS data centers are, and there are a lot of regions uh, across world, and there is a region one here and region one two here. Inside region, I have something called as availability zone. And availability zones are nothing but my data centers in which I have my AWS um, so, um, servers, my networking, my storage, or power unit, cooling unit, all those things. So within a region, I have availability zone one, which have data centers, and I have my servers lying here. Another availability zone here, another availability zone here. Now these availability zones are interconnected by high bandwidth, low latency uh, network, which means if I have to connect from this server here onto the, this server here, it will be milliseconds of uh, of no latency, basically low, very very low latency. And why I want to have my servers across availability zone? These are di uh, different power units. So if there is any problem, sorry. If there is any problem on this data center here, a uh, power unit or cold or anything, my servers in this availability zones are intact. So my uh, it provides me high availability and disaster recovery. So if any problem in this particular servers here, but this servers in this availability zone will pick up and so on. So when I'm creating my clusters, I want to make sure that my worker nodes are scattered across different availability zones so that I put my one worker node here, second worker node here so that what happens is if my there is a problem with the server in this availability zone, at least my applications will be catered by this service in this availability zone. So region and availability zone. I hope this is clear first concept. Now I said I'm going to create something called as VPC and VPC is nothing but a network and also, I said within a VPC, I'm going to create something called a subnet. So what is VPC and subnet? So within a region, I create a network and network is set of IP addresses. If I'm defining my servers, the servers need IP addresses. If I'm defining a load balancer, load balancer needs an IP address so that these machines can talk to each other. I need my gateways or routers to connect to the external world. I need my gateways and uh, and uh, and connections to my between connect connectivity between my master node and worker node. So uh, the VPC is nothing but a network. 
continuous block of IP addresses of a network. So for example, I can have a IP address starting from zero to 10,000 is a IP network and that network broken down into smaller network, which is here subnet and that is my um, subnet. So a bigger network, I break it down to smaller network that subnet and my machines, my worker nodes when I say EC2, which is elastic compute or cl cloud compute, which is my Linux machines or or Windows machines, my virtual machines, they run inside these subnets and they get their IP addresses from here, from here. And then I can connect to these machines from here. So when Mamta created a Linux machine, she created a for Ubuntu install. She created inside a VPC inside that there was a subnet and she created a machine inside that subnet and that's how she got her IP address uh, from that subnet and she was able to connect to this machine through Internet Gateway and again. So this is a high level on that. Now you might have now applications running your your this is my worker node here and this is my worker node two here and my application running on this pod one here my application running on pod two here and what I can do is then I can put a load balancer on top of that and my end users will connect from here to the load balancer load balancer will then in turn forward to pod one or pod two here now how it does we'll look at a little bit later but on a high level load balancers does that on here now so that is for my networking I have networking my network for VPC subnets and load balancers now another component I need to know is storage because I'm creating these servers here EC2 that servers need some storage moreover when my application is writing application writing a persistent data should be stored on my servers and AWS provide different type of storage like any other cloud you have file storage service you have block storage service you have object storage service now these are common storage terminologies and if you don't know maybe google on this uh, those are part of our AWS solution architect or AWS devops uh, we go in detail about what these different type of but let me quickly explain you here what these are my object storage is nothing but I have something called as buckets which is for my images my mo uh, movie files gif files anything which is a object which could be any like my normal um, data which is my um, as I said images um, movies uh, gif anything data which I'm going to store here in in, uh, in in this storage bucket here now glacier is a little bit more for uh, auditing related which I'm not accessing regularly um, I need to access it but maybe once in a blue moon and I can wait to uh, retrieve this di di data for maybe a couple of hours so this is object storage this is important here when I'm booting up my machine Linux machines I'm going to boot it from block storage or my the boot volume from which my Linux machine or Windows machines start they start on from a block storage and that's basically think of it as a attached to the server uh, so that your server can write so when I'm doing my uh, when I'm storing my data I can store on a block storage but if I have a five servers each five like let's suppose I have server one server two server three here each server will have its own block storage local to them so the server one will have a local here server 2 will have its own block server 3 will have its own lo local what if you want three pods to have the same data yeah so you, you might have my pod running here and pod running here these two pods want to write it to the same location a same storage uh, ultimately you want to read and write to the same storage you can also have something called as um, elastic file storage service which is a shared nfs mount uh, data or storage option which will be one single file system will be presented across different containers together so now another one you should be doing and keeping an eye on is users groups policy and roles in AWS because right now in the training uh, in this demo in this training we are doing we are giving everything from a super user which is a root account but in actual implementations you will never have a root account or you'll be lucky if you go have a, got a root account you'll be creating your your own something user my user or Mamta's user 
or Piyush or Darshan's user, individual your user, and that user will be granted a permission or policy. So policy is nothing but a set of permissions that dictates what you can or can't do. So for example, I can only have a read access to my ECR, which is container registry, or I can have a read, but I can also go and push the images onto registry, or I can go and create storage, but I can only create a storage up to five uh, gig, or I can limit the quota. So that's a set of permissions. I can attach these permissions or policies to a user, or I can attach to a role. And then role can be attached to a uh, to a user or role can be attached to a another service and collection of these uh, users i can put them into a group and give them right access now later when you're going to do these uh, labs you're going to create some roles and you'll be assigning those roles for example when my kubernetes cluster is running kubernetes cluster should have a access to my or my EC2 instance from where I'm running should have the Kubernetes cluster role, or it should have a role to read the permit, read the images from my Docker or sorry my EC, ECR Elastic Container Registry. It should have a read access to pull the images from the EC from a registry, and so on. So that's my users policies roles. Again, I'm going to keep it high level because we are not doing uh, we are not doing AWS. We are doing AWS service on EKS and uh, and 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 for mainly for EKS and ECR. So these are some of the other services you should be knowing if you're going AWS. And these are separate set, set of services. So you have compute. Within compute, you have EC2, which is Elastic Cloud Compute, which is your virtual machines. You have EC2 auto scaling, which can scale up based on the demand. You can spin off automatically, scale up or scale down your machines. You have Elastic Load Balancer, we've covered briefly. You have Lambda, which is a function someone was asking earlier, which is a function for compute, or, or like, sorry, serverless for functions, which means I can write, I can say, give me two plus two. And so I'll, uh, oh, sorry, sum. So I'll give you, I'll enter two values, and my function says add them and return response. So it will do one and one, two. It'll give the response. So it'll spin off uh, for a second the uh, function do the compute return the response and die out that function or the compute so i'm only using the compute processing power for the time i need it and after that i don't pay i only pay for what i use for example you uh, do um, um in alexa you say hey alexa what's time now so that's a function it will say hey time is now so it will spin off a function or a compute it'll calculate the time send you the time back and it'll die like that i'm just giving a layman's term an example of lambda and like beanstalk now i'm not i don't want to go into the too much into details but here these are the aws services on um different services are available on and these are the things which should, you should be knowing if you want to go into eks and ecs uh, take that to the next level so guys this was a clip taken from our step-by-step -step comprehensive program that has 16 modules, 60 plus lessons, 35 plus hands-on labs, CV and exam preparation, and the most important on job support. So this comprehensive program is specially curated for you so that you can be from beginners to a master and you can master every skill set that has been required here. And if you're somebody who would want to start off their career in the domain, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on Docker and Kubernetes certification to get you higher paid jobs. And don't you worry, this interactive session will help you in gaining the understanding of why learn containers and Kubernetes, what is Docker container architecture, we'll be discussing about pod with the highly available and scalable applications on Kubernetes. We'll be having demo so that you can perform really, really well. And now if I'm talking about that, what special do we offer? We have the comprehensive learning path for Docker and certified Kubernetes administrator course. So in week one, we'll be talking about microservices and Docker. Week two is about Docker, networking, storage and app stack. Week third is about Kubernetes architecture and installation. In week fourth, we discuss about security, troubleshooting, and high availability. 
Week 5th is about networking that includes all the networking policies, securities, contacts and whatnot. And one thing that I have to mention here is that with every every session we have labs so that you can practice whatever is being discussed in the class and this give you a knack over everybody because you will have the practical knowledge coming to week 6th we are talking about deploying deploying of daemon processes and what not week 7th is about application stack week 8th we talk about advanced networking of course followed by some different lab laboratory sessions and in week 9th and 10th we have we are completely focusing on your certification preparation that includes project work then we have certification practice part one and certification practice part two as well and in week 11th and 12th this week is completely dedicated for your cv preparation and your project work because project work is something that is going to help you with all your exams and of course interviews as well and now talking about the hands-on labs and as you can see on the screen we have almost every topic covered so with every topic you'll have a fine grain understanding of whatever topics we are covering and each topic you can have a practical knowledge that is going to help you in your examination and of course in your jobs we also have sample exam papers in pdf format and here you can definitely see on the screen that what kind of questions we have and these questions are going to make you prepared for your exam and your interviews. So if you really want to have a basic and if you really want to see what all we're going to cover then we have this free class where we'll be talking about why learn Docker and Kubernetes and Docker containers architecture, image and containers and whatnot. So if you want to register for this free class, then just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash k8s02. You'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now. Select an event date, add your name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of interface where you just have to save this link on the extreme right, add it to your calendars and I will see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.